Hi everyone and welcome back to another lecture in computer science for everyone. This time we're going to talk about another one of the pillars of object-oriented programming that is inheritance. I haven't explained inheritance so far because I thought you should get accustomed to programming and learn some of the things that happen in Java before being able to understand this. At least this way it'll be a bit easier. So what is inheritance? Inheritance is just like in the real world when some objects are similar to other objects. For example, dogs, cats and horses are all animals. Chairs, tables and wardrobes are all furniture. And all animals share some characteristics. For example, they have an age or a color. And all furniture have some similar properties like the material they're made from or their age. So this is inheritance. Inheritance, therefore, is when animals all have similar properties and behavior, but the specific dog, cat, and horse extend these properties and behavior into something specific to dogs, cats, or horses. So, animal has some properties and some behavior that is common to dogs, cats, and horses, but each one of these have different properties and behavior to all the other ones. So there are superclasses, which in this case is animal, and there are subclasses, which we have three of them, dog, cat, and horse. So why is this useful? Let's take a game approach. In a game, we have one superclass that is called entity. And these are all the things on the screen that you can see. Let's take, for example, the asteroid game that we were talking about, where we have one spaceship navigating the middle of the screen, and then there's asteroids coming and going, and you have to destroy them. You have static entity and movable entity. For example, the player and the asteroids could be movable entities. And movable entity has some behavior that lets it move about on the screen. Static entity doesn't have that behavior. So by making player and asteroid come from movable entity, we don't have to program this ability to move in both player and asteroid. We can just put it into movable entity. And then both player and asteroid have this, these properties. However, obviously, the player and the asteroid are not the same thing. What changes, for example, is their image. And from static entity, we could have, for example, a space station that doesn't move. And obviously, this helps us um, save time because we don't have to write the same code twice and that is inside entity for all the things in our game. So all the code inside entity would be in all the classes below it. All the code in movable entity would be in all the classes below it, but not those above it. So the classes at the bottom end up inheriting a lot of behavior and properties from all the classes at the top. And in the end, you end up with really small classes that, however, make up your program on, on the majority of it, at least. So in Java, the most basic functionality shared by all classes in Java is provided by the class object, which is a very generic class. Every other class you make extends object by default. You don't have to tell Java that your class extends object, but it does because object provides some basic functionality. So how do we program an inheritance or when a class extends another? Well, as I've been putting in the slides, extends has been in blue and in a special font. And indeed, in order to extend something, we simply write our class, public class dog, and then what it extends. So in this case, extends animal. And now all properties and methods inside animal are copied into dog without you having to do it. So let's jump into a programming video and try to create some classes and make some extensions and see what happens. And we'll create an animal and see when we create a dog and extend animal what happens to the dog, what properties and, and behavior it inherits, and try to clear out any doubts you may have. So stick with me and let's go into the next video.